and we are live. Right? Yo, I appreciate it. Have it peace. I'm considering the fact you always so late. Oh, yeah. I got to start doing the announcements in the beginning. Let me do it. <laughs> Um, praise the Lord. <laughs> I don't know why they do all that extra breathing. Um, no, so uh, anybody who wants to join our weekly uh fellowship, uh, fellowship hour that we have on the Sabbath at four o'clock Pacific time, reach out to me, let me know. And uh, I will get you a link so that you can join by video call um, or non-video call. Some of us, you know, don't put on a video sometimes. Stop putting on my video one of these days and I'll come in there looking ragged. You know what I'm about? You know what I'm saying? Come in there, school all down the side of my darn lip. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go ahead and take the video off. I'll be asleep on the Sabbath. I don't know what y'all be doing. I'll be, I'll be knocked out sometimes. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so uh, definitely let us know. Also, we have, I ain't got my calendar in front of me, but we got the uh, the appointed times coming up. You know what I'm saying? We got the Day of Trumpets coming up. I think it's on the 15th, if I'm not mistaken, the September 15th. Um, and then after that, the Day of Atonement. Ooh. And after that, of course, we have the week of in gathering. Uh, so we'll we'll be doing a couple uh, uh High high Sabbath Bible studies um, around those days, so that we can kind of talk through some things. Um, what other uh, announcements we got? Um, you know, what I'm saying, pray. You know, what I'm saying, pray for the families. Pray for pray for everybody. Um, pray for sister sister Pamela. Pray for her sister Sharon. Um, sister Donna, brother Arya. Uh, also, brother Daniel. Uh, brother Daniel going through a move. Uh, been a little busy, so and people like moving from where he live, or yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 got a house uh up north, so you know what I'm saying. Oh, so, uh, I got a call. He ain't even tell me. Move probably on Sunday, maybe a little bit on Friday. Next he out of line. Um, all right. Well, that's all the announcements. You know what I'm saying? You ready? Sabbath peace. Peace. Another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the hope for salvation, the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by great. Hold on, stop the press. T. Yeah. You know, Mel got braces now? Yeah, yeah. Peter sent me the picture. He was all happy when she got him. He is sitting over here just as cute as ever. I'm just looking at my man. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the City only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a, uh, a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made and made that you do not. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of gift of tongues or a gift of or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment with that said peace to the saints that are in the room to the saints that are watching in on the camera the saints that couldn't make it but no peace to the wicked the only thing we say to them is that you repent that they might live you know what i'm saying yeah you know what i'm talking about all right, let's get to it. Last week, we talked about the book of Hosea. We read about uh, a little less than half of the book of Hosea, uh, and we, we learned that the Most High God had Hosea go pick up a wife of whoredom, right? He had to go pick up a wife that was out there. You know what I'm saying? As, uh, what's his name? What's the rapper name? What's the rapper name that everybody likes? No, nah, the other one. Nah. No, nah, not Drake, but he rapped with Drake sometimes. Call that black? No, the other one. Come on. <gasps> no, not no. Call that black? No, it's a, it's a bad. He's not good. He's a terrible rapper, but everybody likes him. Like uh, Blueface? No, not Blueface. Little baby? He's a not little baby. What's the other one? The one? 
He did a whole album with him. Black? Isn't I got black? a really big ring. We do some really big things. That one. Where's that one on? Big, big Sheen. <laughs> That's terrible. Future. Look, future. Uh... Look. Future. Look, future. He said, he said, he for the streets. That's what Hosea wife was. Right, you got a twenty-one savage sister. Share said twenty. He had to go find. He had to go find one. That was the most I got. Told him go find one that's for the streets. Right. Then he went to go find her. Right. Then he had to have babies by, and each each baby that he had represented a prophecy of the Most High God. He represented a prophecy of the Most High God. So we spent all week. I mean, uh, all last uh, last week we spent the whole study. Kind of breaking down those prophecies that that the Most High God gave to Hosea for our people, right? And we tried to make some sense of it, tried to explain some things, and learn some interesting things about about our people and the things that that we uh, were prophesied to go through. So that is now going to continue. If y'all remember, the last time we start, Most High God started to clean it up for us a little bit, right? Most High God started was like Most High God was like uh, he started he started he started telling us, you know what I'm saying? Well, listen, I'm gonna send y'all out there. But I'm also going to bring y'all back. He started to tell us the good side of the prophecy. Right. At first, it started off with like, man, it's about to be all bad. Then the most High God come back and he like, listen, you uh, you you going you going to be in a position that I'm going to actually bring y'all back. I'm going to help y'all out. Right. So it's important for us to understand the most High God starts off with the severity. Right. He starts off with the severity, something to get our attention, something to to make us perk up and be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do what I need to do. Then he'll, you know what I'm saying? Then he'll bring in some hope, right? This is something that you can look forward to also. That's we. That's kind of where we left off. We're going to see some of that kind of continues, like the hope piece of it, where we at, right? So let's pick it up where we left off. Hosea, Hosea chapter, um, where we leave off, T? What's the last chapter we read? Uh, Hosea 5, 15 is where we stopped. 5, 15. Okay, so yeah, that, that should be the end because all, all Hosea chapters are short. So do um, Hosea chapter 6 then. It's Hosea chapter 6. Give me verse 1. Boy, what you, what you buying? You know what I'm saying? What you buying? This is the big look. It's the big look. It's the big orange podium for my man Don. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They call him Orange Man, so I got the big, I got the big orange podium for my man Don. Big T. They tried to lock my man up. Y'all saw how he tried to lock my man up, right? They got the mug. Y'all ain't see Donald Trump mug, mug shot? Look, yeah, I was watching. <laughs> Listen, I, I was just watching. Oh, look, they did. Look, they got him again. So look, I would just tell my wife. I was like, listen. I ain't never seen nobody get indicted so many times they do a lick of time. You know what I'm saying? And after that, they said, oh, no, we're going to fix that. I was like, they ain't handcuffed my man. He ain't got no mug shot. Sure enough. The next day, you know what I'm saying? He flew in. You know what I'm saying? He flew in. He promoting it, too. He sent the, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm on true social. You know what I'm saying? I'm a real, I'm a real supporter. You know what I'm saying? Look, they said, look, he flew in. It said he lands in Atlanta. Right? He had his plane, his private jet. He lands in Atlanta. Right. And then after that, he's turning himself in. And that boy took a mud shot like this, like ice cube on that thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> took a mud shot like that. You know what I'm saying? Then that boy posted it himself. You know what I'm saying? And he is like, they trying to get me donate to the campaign. Oh, this guy's a genius. <laughs> this guy's a genius. <laughs> that thing's a mess, bro. But now nah, they locked him up. And they locked like 19 of them boys up. A bunch of white folks. You know what I'm saying? That thing felt like reparations a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at all these white folks in jail. I'm looking like, oh, this might be all right. You know what I'm saying? These Democrats might not be off too much. You know what I'm saying? They put all these white folks in jail. Then they all got right off. You know what I'm saying? All of them just walked right on out. I was like, ain't that? Oh, but you know what's cold about it? Listen, all the white folks, I think it was like two black people that got locked up with them. You know what I'm saying? It was like a total of like 20 or 19 or something like that. And like two of them was black. Right? Guess who's still in jail? All them, look, all them walk in, take their picture. All right. You know what I'm saying? Guess who's still in jail? 
That's out of line. One of the black people out. But there's one left. He black. Or they say, I don't know if he for real black. When I look at his picture, it look like he's like, mm, poquito black. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But, you know what I'm saying? He still in jail, but he the leader of, guess what? Black Voices for Trump. You know what I'm saying? I was like, and they left your maybe black butt right on in there. Oh, that's a cold game, boy. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. boy, the cold. You can't trust none of them, boy. You can't trust a Democrat. Uh, you can't get trust his a Republican, you can't trust none of these people. You know what you got to do? Serve the most high God. You know what I'm saying? You start, listen now, I'm still voting for Trump, but it served the most high God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My vote for Trump is not because I agree with the man. It's just strategic. You know what I'm saying? It's all strategic. That's it. You know what I'm saying? But listen, they locked my man up. You know what I'm saying? They let the black man sit there. Or, you know what I'm saying? Probably black man sit there and hang. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see when my man get out. I think it's a cold-blooded thing. You know what's real cold about it, though? It's a black lady that put Trump in there. That means it's a black lady that's holding a black man up. Ain't nobody going to talk about that piece of it, though. You know what I'm saying? It's like the stuff that they come, they got us in a mindset that they don't allow us to think differently. Not a black man, at least. Like a black man, you're not going to be allowed to really think differently or think in any any raw way. You know what I'm saying? If it's raw, they're going to try to they're going to try to hide and conceal it and, and, and try to put you in position and pressure you to kind of think differently. Um, so you got to be mindful of that, you know, as a as a black man, and a black woman. Right. You got to you got to be you got to be mindful of that because it'll it'll be a lot of pressure in the world to think along certain lines. Right, whether it be Democrat lines or Republican lines and all that, you know what I'm saying? They got a lot of people that even in the Republican lines, like they will only accept you if you if you if you if you uh present yourself a certain way, right? It's it's a few black Republicans, right? And they proud black Republicans. Yeah, over the Republican Party and Donald Trump is great and all that stuff. They do all that stuff thinking they're doing something. Like they thinking, they thinking like, yeah, we on the right side. We don't want to be Democrats, you know what I'm saying? Thinking they're doing something. And then uh what's his name? What's the what's the Republican down in Florida? DeSantis. DeSantis, yeah. So then DeSantis, DeSantis came and his people approved something that said something like, you know what I'm saying, the slaves gained skills. Yeah, you know I'm saying I forget what it was, but it was like the slave gained skills from being slaves. So it's like it's like slavery wasn't all bad because they learned something from it. Which is offensive to us, right? Like you, how dare you? You know what I'm saying? That's offensive had, to us. We had all so, those skills before slavery. That's why you made us slaves. You know? Listen, listen. So these black Republicans stood up and they they going at DeSantis and all his people. They looking like, nah, y'all need to take that out that book. The rest of the book is good, he said. He said, but y'all gotta take that part out. That don't make no sense. And so he saw that the the, the the black Republicans, they saw that how hard like the Republicans will die on that hill. This one little sentence, easily taking out the book, the rest of it good. But they will rather leave it on there and just say, oh, you guys are Democrats. So they start calling their Republican black brothers Democrats. Just because they're like, that's not true, bro. Democrat, I mean, those slaves ain't darn learned nothing from slavery. What you talking about? Matter of fact, that's because these people don't really know the history. It was illegal to learn stuff. <laughs> they don't know the history. They don't know. They don't, like, people don't sit there and they, they don't ask themselves the difference of, like, Hmm, why didn't the Native American get put in slavery at, at the same rate as the folks that was picked up from Africa? And it's because the folks that was picked up from Africa, we did this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all didn't teach us no skill. We taught y'all some skill. Like, this is what we did. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know we knew how to we know how to take care of a crop. We knew how to work. It was all these other folks that were lazy. You know what I'm saying? Not us. We Hebrews. But when they brought us over here, we had skill. We already had the skill. They just whipped us on our back to make us use the skills. But y'all ain't teach us. You know, that's crazy. You think, oh, yeah, we learned how to do this stuff from y'all. Yeah, y'all lazy buzz. I think I ever read about how a slave that's master crazy. taught his slaves how to do all of the stuff they was doing. Yeah, like, now these people. He literally took time out his day to teach his slaves. I was like, yeah, okay. And that's right. Native Americans had the slaves, too. And why wouldn't they? You know what I'm saying? The most I got, look, the most I got say, oh, free labor. You know what I'm saying? Who ain't going to come pick it up? 
Sometimes I'd be driving by Home Depot just like that. I'd be driving by Home Depot. You ever drove by Home Depot and then you mess with the people, you just roll the window down just a little bit and they all come rushing to your car thinking that you want some work. You know what I'm saying? If one of them came up to the car was like, free labor, I'll find something for them to do. I'd be like, nah, you know what I'm saying? My backyard, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because that's free labor. Well, you got that's how you got to look at it. You know what I'm saying? Most high God put us on there, put us on the blocks, you know what I'm saying? Free labor. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, get you a slave. Free labor. That's how I go. Of course, the Native yeah, Americans they don't, don't wanna, do. They don't want to listen to me. Maybe they'll listen to you. Huh? The guy was like, they don't want to listen to me. Maybe they'll listen to you. That's exactly what it did. That's exactly what it did, right? That's exactly what he did. And a lot of it started with what we read in Hosea, right? What we were reading last week. Most High God said, yeah, I'm going to send you off and I'm going to scatter you in all the countries, right? And that's what he ended up doing to us. That's how we end up where we are now. We all over the world, right? We speak English here, but there's a bunch of us down as far north as you can get. And uh, what's a what's the in South America? What's the what's the country that's all the way at the north? I mean, uh, not north, uh, south. Uh, ain't it Argentina or something like that? I don't know. Is it Argentina or Argentina? Argentina. Argentina. I ain't no Mexican. No, I don't know why y'all. You know what I'm saying? No way y'all. Who y'all talking to? Argentina. Then you know what I'm saying? Argentina. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the one. You know what I'm saying? It get cold at the bottom of Argentina. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's some of us down there in Brazil. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's some of us in Alaska, but I heard it was. We all over the place. But let's look at Hosea. This is Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Watch what the book say. Come and let us return to Yahuwah. For he has book say, torn. come and let us return to Yahuwah. For he has torn and he will heal us. He uh -huh. has he has smitten and he will bind us up. Uh -huh. After two days will he revive us, and in the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Uh huh. Then shall we know if we follow on to know Yahuwah. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and shall come unto us as the rain, and the latter and the former rain unto the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? Put it down. For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as the early dew it goes away. See, oh, like, hold on, hold on. I'm about to break something down for y'all because it's something I almost missed it too. Go back, go back. Start at the beginning. Watch this. It's a, it's a lot going on right now. He said, "Listen." He said, "The former and the latter rain." He said, "He going he going he going be with, we going to see him on the third day, right?" He said, "Yo, he said, yo, uh, you like the he you like the morning rain or the dew that go away." It's a lot that's being said right now. Let's take this thing a little bit slower. Watch this. This is uh, Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Watch this. Come and let us return unto Yahuwah. Or he he said, seen. let us return unto Yahuwah. So we were just talking about it got rough, and then he started giving us something to hope for. So he's, the context would be he's already sent us. He's exiled us. He's gotten rid of us. Remember we talked about last week? He divorced us, right? So... In this context, he's saying after that happens, at some point, y'all going to be like, yo, let us return to Yahuwah. You remember last week we talked about, well, we might have talked about this in uh, Fellowship Hour. But remember last week we talked about how, how all the most high God wants us to do is to confess. Right? Confess our sins and come back to him. Right? Everything else is just a waste of time. We be looking at stuff. We were talking about the black family and trying to get it in order. And Brother Arya made a good point. He like, listen, at the end of the day, all you got to do is serve the most high God. Things will fall together. Because that's all he's looking for. Just confess and turn yourself back to him. Turn away from all the sin. So he's saying it's going to come a time that we're going to be like, yo, let's return ourselves to Yahuwah. Watch this. For he has torn and he will heal us. He has so look, hidden. he's the one who tore us up. But he's also going to be the one to heal us. He's talking about, listen, he divorced us. He sent us away. But he's also going to be the one to take us back. That's, that's what this is talking about. Keep going. Watch this. He will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. And after uh -huh. two days, will he revive us? And in a so look, he day, said, after two days, will he revive us? Right? And then what? And in the third day, he will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. Look, and on, did he say after the third day? On the third day. He said in the third day, within it. 
right? So after two days, after these two days complete, right, he'll rise us, he'll revive us, right? But then in the third day, he going to do what? He will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. We going to live in his sight. That's different. It's something that's being said right here. A lot of people don't understand. You look at, um, we don't have to get it, but Peter tells us a day with Yahuwah is like what? A thousand years. And in a thousand years is like what? Day. Right? So that association is made. He's telling us after two days, he's going to revive us. Right? He's going to revive us. He's going to bring us back. That's the resurrection this man is talking about right now. Jose is trying to explain to y'all the resurrection. He said, listen, after two days, the resurrection is going to happen. Right? And he said, in the third day, what's going to happen? He will raise us up. And mm -hmm. we will live in his sight. And we will live in his sight. So now, let's break it down. Let's just kind of think this thing through. We know that there is something called the what the Christians used to call the millennial period. Why did they call it that? Because the Yahushua Yahu was going to reign for a thousand years. For a thousand years. A thousand years is a millennium. Right? So they called it a millennial period. Right? That's how they call it. Right? It's a thousand years. The book document. We ain't got to get it. But in Revelation, they talk about a thousand years that this man is going to rule. And when he rules, guess where we will be living? Those of us that are uh, accounted worthy. In Jerusalem. We're going to be living in his sight. Right? And that's exactly what this. We're going to see the man. That's exactly what this is saying. Right? So if we know there's a thousand years that we're going to be living in the man's sight. Right? And we also know that this say, in the third day, the man going to revive us and we're going to be living in his sight. Right? I don't know. A day might be like a thousand years. So what would that tell us about the two days? How many years is that? Two thousand. Two thousand years. How long ago did Yahushua die? About two thousand years. Almost two thousand years, huh? Almost. Right? You look at this, this might be telling us something. Okay, let's look at it a different way. How long were the Israelites supposed to be in uh, uh, in oppression. <clears throat> 400. 400 years, right? How long have we been on oppression in this country? About 400. About 400 years. It's a lot of things that are lining up. We don't know exact dates. You know what I'm saying? We don't know the exact year or day that Yahushua died. Some people say he died, you know what I'm saying? And in the 30th year AD, some say the 26 years, some say 33, some say 29. It's all over the place. Who knows, right? We don't know the exact day that the first slave was gone. It's documented that the first slave was, um, what was it, 1619. So in 2019, people was like, this is it. Right. But we don't know. Maybe that slave wasn't a Hebrew slave. Maybe that was an African slave. You know what I'm saying? He might have been a Hamite. Who knows? I don't know. We don't really know the exact dates of anything. All we know is the man said after two days. Right. Read it again. For he has torn and he will heal us. He mm -hmm. has written and he will bind us up. After two days, will he revive us? And in the third day, in the third day, he will raise us up, raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. That's right. <clears throat> right. And, and we know that the Most High God told, um, he told uh, Abraham that his descendants would be, you know what I'm saying, afflicted in a, in, a, in a space that's not theirs. You know what I'm saying? He, he said it would be that way for 400 years. We don't know when that exact time started. We don't know when exactly when it's going to end. But we know that we've been in this country specifically. You know what I'm saying? About 400 years. We also know that about 2,000 years is coming up for Yahushua. Let me show y'all something else. Remember when we read Joshua? And in Joshua, 
we were going over to Jordan across into the land to take over the land. Remember, we were about to go fight all the giants and, you know what I'm saying, kill all the Canaanites. Watch what we missed. Let's go back to jo this Joshua chapter 3, verse 1. This Joshua chapter 3, verse 1. See, when we went through the book this time, we didn't do the, you know what I'm saying? We didn't do the strong meat. Right now, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the stuff that we read in the book, we just we just giving it to you flat out just so you understand the history, understand what's going on. Right? We didn't go to, we didn't dig deep in this stuff. Listen, this book get deep now. This book get deep now. You know what I'm saying? Listen, we can open this thing up. You know what I'm saying? We taking the easy. This the uh, you know what I'm saying, how you you know what I'm saying? This is the this is the basics. You know what I'm saying? This is 101. Just you know knowing, what I'm saying? Just knowing the we, histories, getting familiar with the stories and what happened. And then once you know exactly what happened, the history and the course of things chronologically, you can go back and start to like delve in it a little bit more. So you can be it's important, familiar. right? It's important to be familiar with what's going on. You ain't got to remember every key detail, but it's important to be familiar with, with what's going on before you try to get too deep in the book. A lot of people start getting a lot of these brothers go wrong because they try to go super, super, super deep without understanding it overall like he they don't understand the basic level message they don't understand that the facts and what actually happened so it's, it's nothing to keep their mind from just drifting off wherever they want to go your imagination can go crazy if you don't really understand the book once you understand the book everything lines up so you once you familiar with all the barriers that the book put the book all the book do is put barriers up right it's telling you listen it's just letting you know if you cross this line you not of God. If you cross this line, you can't believe this and be of God. You can't believe that and be of God. It puts up a bunch of barriers to guide you and to keep you in God, right? So if all them barriers is put up and you're aware of them, then you keep yourself in a place where it's safe, right? When you don't have those barriers, your mind just go wherever, right? It's the, the narrow path versus the broad path that, that y'all should will talk about, right? So Let's let's look at this. Joshua chapter three. I'm just gonna give y'all a little taste of the type of like you know what I'm saying. Next time we go through this book, we getting deep. You know what I'm saying? Like the next time we do this, we getting deep. I'm gonna give y'all just a little taste of the stuff that that we pass over. That really, you know what I'm saying? We can get real deep with some of this stuff. This is uh Joshua chapter three verse one. Watch the book say. Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed. They were moved from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all uh -huh. the children of Israel, and stayed and lodged there before they passed over. Uh -huh. It came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Hey, T, Brother T, you, were you familiar with this book? In Revelations, the book talks about the Ark of the Covenant. Who was it talking about? The Ark of the Covenant? Mm-hmm. Talking about what Moses built in the wilderness, what, uh, what they built in the wilderness. For sure. But in Revelation, who was it talk, talking about? Yahushua. Talking about Yahushua. Didn't it say the Ark of the Covenant came down? Yeah, that's right. Yep. The sky opened up and the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant came down, or the Ark came down? Yeah, it was in, uh, it was in, uh, it was up, up with, uh, on a right, it was in uh, heaven with the Father. Mm hmm. Right? So you see this ark. Now the officers are coming by and they say, Yo, 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 keep an eye on the ark. Read it. Watch this. And it came to pass three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah your God and the priests and Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Mm -hmm. Yet there shall be a space between you and it above 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it that you may you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way heretofore. Listen, it said about how many cubits? Two thousand cubits. I wonder why he chose that number. <clears throat> he said, Listen, look for the Ark of the Covenant. When you see the Ark of the Covenant. It's going you need to keep a space of about 2000 cubits in between y'all. And for what reason? Let's look at it. Go 
come not near unto it that you may know the way by which you must go. You, you got to know which way you going. You get to moving too fast. Listen, he said, look, you got to wait until it's about 2,000 cubits. Otherwise, your butt ain't going to know which way to go. Right? Watch this. Keep going. For you have not passed this way heretofore. Mm-hmm. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow Yahuwah will do wonders among you. Mm-hmm. Joshua, Joshua spake unto the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. They took up the and Ark. And pass over the where? Behind the people? Before the people. That means in front of the people. He said, look, take up the Ark of the Covenant and then go in front of the people. The people got to wait 2,000 cubits. And after 2,000 cubits, then they can follow after. It might be like, I don't know, maybe one cubit a year. Right? Because it's the same thing. Yahushua came down here. And then where did he go after he came down here? The Father. He went to the right hand of the Father. That's our ark. And now we got to wait to about 2,000 years. Because one year, I mean, one day is like a year to the Most High God. And a year, I mean, it's like a thousand years to the Most High God, right? And a thousand years is like a day. And you got 2,000, which would be, I don't know, two days. And then we go back to Hosea, and let's read that again in Hosea. Let's see what he's talking about. We doing God math right now. And again, we don't ever we don't ever look at prophecy to make predictions. You know what I'm saying? That's a pride fight. We don't want to do pride fight. We UFC. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to do no pride fight. Right? We don't make predictions. What we try to do is expose each other to the word so that if it happened and when it happened, we say, you know what? God was right. Right? God was right. He was right again. Glory be to him. Right? This is uh, Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Come and let us return unto Yahuwah, for he has uh -huh. torn and will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. And mm -hmm. after two days will he revive us. And the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. We're going to live in his sight. Watch this. Then shall we know if we follow on to know Yahuwah. For his mm -hmm. going forth is prepared as the morning and shall come unto us as the rain. And as Watch the this. Earth. As the latter and former reign unto the earth. Now listen, at this point, Yahushua ain't even came here yet, right? How many people do you think would have read that and been like, oh yeah, one day the Messiah gonna come. He gonna come once and he gonna come again. Nobody knew about the second coming until Yahushua came. Nobody knew that the Messiah was supposed to come once as a sacrifice and then he gonna come again as a judge. Nobody knew that. But we look here and it's telling us, it's saying, he, look, you are to us like the former rain and the latter rain. In other words, you like to us the rain that comes in the beginning of the year and the rain that comes at the end of the year. Generally, in our land, the former rain occurs in, uh, right before, uh, right before. Um, in gathering? No, not in. Yeah, in gathering too. But the former rain comes right before uh, Passover. Right. The, the Feast of First Fruits. Right. Then the latter rain that would come right before the end gathers. Right. So that's why when we talk about when we talk about the appointed times, all of the appointed times testify Yahushua. Right. Because he's already fulfilled the former rain. He came already. He fulfilled Passover, the, the Feast of First Fruits or the day of, uh, you know, the first fruit sheaf, uh, sheaf waving. Right. He fulfilled the uh, week of unleavened bread. He fulfilled Pentecost. Well, he didn't completely fulfill Pentecost, but the spirit came on, on Pentecost, which is the Feast of Weeks. Right. So now what we're looking at is, OK, now it's the latter rain. And the latter rain is going to be the feast that we just talked about. Right. Right. It's going he's represented in the uh, day of trumpets. He's represented in the uh, day of atonement and the day of ingathering or the week of ingathering rather. Right. Oh, that's the latter rain. When the man come back, he fulfills these things. Right. This is the book of Hosea kind of explain this to us. But this is more deep. 
right? We wouldn't have understood this if walking around in that time. We ain't seen no Messiah. All we doing is running around. They they burning they burning incense in the high places. They doing all types of wild stuff. These people ain't think about no darn prophecy. And even if they were, there's so limited information that nobody who would have put that together without God. Right? Let's see. Keep going. Watch this. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as the morning cloud, and as the early dew it goes away. Mm -hmm. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my, thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they like men have transgressed the covenant. They they had there they have dealt treacherously against me. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity and is polluted with blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent, for they mm -hmm. commit lewdness. I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is whoredom of Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, Judah, he has set a harvest for thee when I return the captivity of my people. Keep going. Watch this. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood and the chief com cometh in and the troop of robbers spoil out without. And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness, not their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. They make the king glad with their wickedness and the princes with their lies. They are all adulterers as an oven heated by the baker who ceases from rate who ceases from raising after he hath kneaded the dough until it is leavened. In the day of our king, the priests have made him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hand with scorners, for they have made their they have made ready their heart like an oven, whilst they lie in wait. Their baker sleepeth all the night, in the morning it burneth as a flaming fire. They are all, all right, he said he, he said these boys like they burnt up. These boys is burnt up with sin. You know what I'm saying? Back where I'm from, you know what I'm saying? Somebody say something crazy, like, man, he burnt out. You know what I'm saying? That was the most God just called all of Israel. He said, man, these boys are burnt out. Watch this. They are all hot as an oven and have devoured their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that calleth unto me. Mm -hmm. Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Strangers has devoured his strength. And he knoweth it not. Yea, great hairs are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth not. And the pride of Israel testifieth to his face, and they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all this. Mm -hmm. Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart. They call to Egypt, they go to Assyria. When they shall go, I will spread my net upon them. I will bring them down as the fowls of heaven. I will chastise them as their congregation has heard. He tell them, they're going to try to run to Assyria. They're going to try to run to Egypt. He said, but no matter where they go, I'm going to get they butt. Nothing has changed. It's people talking about, you know what I'm saying? I was talking to a friend. You're talking about, yeah, I might, I might want to go to Canada. It's like, I mean, you can go. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I'm worried about is what you going for, like what you running from. What you running from specifically. He's like, I just don't like how, you know what I'm saying, the laws are in the U.S. I'm like, oh, okay. So you can try somebody else's laws. You know what I'm saying? But. As long as you ain't running from the punishment of the most high God. You know what I'm saying? Because if you run from that, it ain't no point. Wherever you go, it's going to find you out. Right? Because you can't escape the most high God. What we dealing with, what's on us is from God. Right? It's not, it's not this thing. This thing ain't nothing else. It is from God. So wherever we are, we got to speak to what justice is at the individual level. Because the only way we're going to get off of what we're doing is by turning to God and doing justice. Keep going. Woe unto them, for they have fled from me. Destruction unto them, because they have transgressed against me. Though I have redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. And they have not cried unto me with their heart when they howled upon their beds. They assembled themselves for corn and wine, and they rebel against me. Though I have bound and strengthen their arms, yet do they imagine mischief against me. 
They return, mm-hmm. but not to the most high. They are like a deceitful bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. Mm-hmm. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. Keep going. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle against the house of Yahuwah, because they heard they because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed mm-hmm. against my law. Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. Israel hath cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols, that they may be cut off. Thy calf, O Samaria, has cast thee off. My anger. You remember the calf that Jeroboam put together? Right? He said, by silver and gold, they own silver and gold. They made them idols. Right? Remember, remember Jeroboam? He made two golden calves. He put one in, in Bethel and one in Dan. And then every king after that, just about every king after that, it told us that the king didn't turn away from the sins of Jeroboam. This is what the Most High God is talking about. Watch this. Keep going. Thy calf, O Samaria, has cast thee off. My anger is kindled against them. How long will it be error they attain to innoc- innocency? For, I- for from Israel was it also the workmen made it. Therefore, it is not God. But the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. For they mm-hmm. have sworn the wind, and they have reaped the whirlwind. They have sown the wind, and they have mm-hmm. reaped the whirlwind. It has, it has no stock. The bud shall yield no meal. If so be it yield, the stranger shall swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. Mm-hmm. For they are gone up to Assyria, a wild donkey alone by himself. Ephraim has hired lovers. Yea, though they have hired among the nations, now will I gather them, and they shall, they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. Because Ephraim, Ephraim have made many altars to sin, Altar shall be upon him to sin. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. Listen to that. He said, Most High God is telling us, He has written to us the great things of His law. Oh, man. He's telling us, listen, what I gave y'all is great. This thing is amazing. You know what I'm saying? But when y'all look at it, y'all look at it like that thing is strange. Like it's crazy. Has anything changed? <clears throat> right now, you go to any, you go to anybody who you think. I'm not talking about what the world thinks. I'm talking about who you think. Anybody who you think is righteous and loving and God-fearing and filled with the spirit. Anybody who you think is that way outside of the people that that we involved with for this bible study you just go to them or the people that you used to think was that way you go to them and you bring them the law of the most high god you just get to talking about oh man this law i t- t- try what i'm telling you just test it right go to the person that you think i know they know god they gotta know god i mean sister cheryl she gotta know god I mean, she always praying and talking about God and all this, and she on the praise team, all this. Just go to him, right? Go to him. The person that you think is the most spiritual person or the most holy person or whatever, right? And I'm talking about Bible-believing people. I'm talking about Christians, right? I'm talking about people who, who respect the Bible, believe the Bible. Go to them, take them to law. And when you bring them to law, just talk about how good the law is and how much you love the law. And how how like the the words of the law was so righteous and it was so right and it was so perfect, filled with so much wisdom. Just talk to them and watch what happened. I bet you they butt start squirming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I mean, but no, I mean the law. But, you know, Jesus, Jesus did away with that. Because the law is strange to them. And that's what he got on our brethren about our fathers about. He got him because he's looking like, man, listen, I wrote this whole thing for y'all, and y'all thought it was strange. Y'all thought that thing was crazy. Keep going. Watch this. They sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of my offerings and eat it, 
but Yahuwah accepteth them not. Now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sins, and they shall return to Egypt. For Israel has forgotten his maker. Look, the book say they shall return to Egypt. You remember we read in uh you remember we read in uh D -D 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 Deuteronomy mm -hmm. chapter 28 at the very end. They say they will return to Egypt in ships. Right? And nobody will redeem them. But the book say uh King James say buy. But what it's talking about is no one will redeem them. Right? They will be sold to Egypt in ships, but nobody will redeem them. And that's the same thing that this is talking about. It's saying you going back to Egypt. Right? We didn't really go back to Egypt, not in captivity at least. Right? But Egypt represented it. The, the word Egypt here is comes from a Hebrew word called Mesraim, and Mesraim is captivity. Right? So it's saying you're going back to captivity. We used to call Egypt captivity. That's the name that we gave Egypt. The real name of Egypt wasn't Egypt. The real name of Egypt wasn't Mitzrayim. Right? That's the name that the Hebrews gave to Egypt because we never forgot the captivity that we had there. So we just called it. It would be like, if it was English, it would be like calling the place, oh, that's captivity. Right? You know, I like, you know what I'm saying? People call North Las Vegas North Town. Right. We just gave it that name. North Town, North Town. Right. We gave it that name. Right. But in reality, that's not the name. Well, that's how we was with, with, with Egypt. It was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's uh, that's captivity. All right. Keep going. Watch this. For Israel hath forgotten his maker and build the temples and Judah has multiplied fenced cities. But I will send a fire upon his cities and it shall devour the palaces thereof. Mm hmm. Rejoice not, O Israel, for joy as other people, for thou hast gone a whoring from thy God. Thou mm -hmm. hast loved the reward upon every corn floor. The floor and wine press shall not feed them, and the new wine shall fall in her. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt, and they shall eat unclean things in Assyria. Well, like God said, when we go to Assyria, he's telling us where we're going, by the way. Right, he's telling us now. He's saying, "Listen, you're gonna eat unclean things in Assyria." Right, you can see yeah, like, as as like, we get like, closer to the judgment, like the, the Most High God is revealing more and more to us. Right, he starts off, and you look in the Book of Amos. He didn't really give us no details. Right, he just like, "Yo, something bad about to happen." That's pretty much what Amos was saying. Look, it's about to go down. Y'all gonna go into captivity. A bunch of y'all gonna get killed. Amos just kind of giving us the high level. But then Hosea, he's giving us a little bit more detail now. He he yeah. mentioned specific names. Y'all gonna go to Assyria and y'all gonna eat unclean things there, right? He talked about how you know what I'm saying Hosea. He mentioned you know what I'm saying a few different things about Assyria already, right? Keep going. Watch this. They shall not offer wine offerings to the Lord, neither shall they be pleasing to Him. Their sacrifices shall be unto them as the bread of mourners. All that eat thereof shall be polluted, for their bread for their souls shall not come into the house of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. What will you do in the solemn day and in the day of the feast of Yahuwah? For lo, they are gone because of destruction. Egypt shall gather them up. Memphis shall bury them. The pleasant, the pleasant places for their silver, nettles shall, pos so shall possess them. Thorns mm -hmm. shall be in their tabernacles. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad for the multitude of thine iniquity and the great hatred. The watchman of Ephraim was with my God, but the prophet is a snare or of a, of a fowler in all his ways and hatred in the house of his God. They have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibeah. Therefore, he will remember their iniquity. He will visit their sins. Mm-hmm. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as first ripe, as the first ripe in the fig tree, as her first time. But they mm -hmm. went to Baal Peor and separated themselves into that shrine, into that shame, and their abominations were according as they loved. As for right, Israel, so what he's what he's trying to tell us here, he is like, man, look, y'all was like y'all was like a grapevine to me, 
like but a grapevine that just like produces first like somebody just planted it and now this is the first fruit that ever came off of that thing he's like that's what y'all was to me he's like so i walked by and i picked y'all i took care of y'all right but then he is like but then y'all separated y'all self from me and bl bl uh bl pure right y'all remember that was talking about what balaam did in the book of you remember balaam he had to go speak prophecy and balak who was the king he was looking for a prophecy against us right but instead balaam's like man the only thing i can do is speak the prophecy of the most high god he did what he was supposed to do he only spoke the words that the most high god said when he was speaking that prophecy but then afterwards the book told us that balak gave i mean uh balaam gave balak wick, wicked counsel and that wicked counsel led to our people running off with the women of uh moab and we ran off with their women we start serving their gods we start doing inappropriate stuff with them and all of a sudden the most High had to break out against us and he judged us so this is what he's talking about he is like man look i picked y'all up Y'all was nothing. I picked y'all up and started taking care of y'all. Then all of a sudden, y'all going to separate. You know what I'm saying? Y'all going to separate yourself from me and start doing that foolishness? Let's keep going. Watch this. As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away like a bird from the birth and from the womb and from the conception. Though they bring up their children, yet will I bereave them that, they mm -hmm. shall, that there shall not be a man left. Yea, woe also to them when I depart from them. Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus, is planted in a pleasant place, but Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the murderer. Give them, O Lord, what will you give them? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts, all mm. their wickednesses in Gilgal, Gilgal, for there I hated them. He said, all of their wickedness is in Gilgal, because there I what? I hated them. Right? This is the most I got. You ever heard people say, well, God hates the sin, not the sinner. He hates the sin, not the person. That's a lie. This is the children of Israel the Most High God is talking to. This is the people that he selected. And because they not behave in the way he thinks they should behave, he looked at those same people that he called out of all the people, the same people that he said he loved, the same people that, that he gave plenty of blessings to, did all these miracles for, the same people that he set up to be a light of the world, right? Those exact same people he looked at them and said, yo, when y'all was there, I hated y'all. You can't believe what these people say. You make these people prove what they're saying in the book. God hates the person that does sin. And what you think going to do, what, what you think going to happen to the person that God hates? You're going right to hell. And the only reason he's going to hate you is because you're disobedient. Right? Let's keep reading. Watch this. And their wickedness is in Gilgal, for there I hated them. For their wickedness of their doings, I will drive them out of my house. I will love mm -hmm. them no more. All their princes are revolters. Ephraim is smitten. Their root is dried up. They shall bear no fruit. Yea, mm -hmm. though they bring forth, yet will I slay even the, belo even the beloved fruit of their womb. Mm -hmm. My God will cast them away because they did not hearken unto him and they shall be wanderers among the nations. Look, he said they're going to be wanderers among the nations. He's telling you the house of Israel is going to get scattered and they're going to be all over the place, all over these nations. He's letting you know exactly how this thing is playing out. Right. Keep going. Israel is an empty vine. He brings forth fruit unto himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he hath increased the altars. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found guilty, faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. For now they shall say, we have no king because we fear not Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. What then should a king do to us? They have spoken words, swearing falsely and making a covenant. Thus judgment springs up as as uh, as hemlock in the furloughs of the field. Mm -hmm. The inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of Beth Haven. 
For the people thereof shall mourn over it, and the priests thereof that rejoiced on it, for the glory thereof, because it is departed from it. It shall be also carried unto Assyria for a present. To King Jareb, Ephraim shall receive shame, and Israel mm -hmm. shall be ashamed of his own counsel. For Samaria, as for Samaria, her king is cut off as the as the foam upon the water. The high places also of Avon, the sin of Israel shall be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle shall come up on their altars, and they shall say to the mountains, cover us, and the hills fall on us. O Israel, thou hast sinned from the days of Gibeah. There they stood. The battle in Gibeah against the children of iniquity did not overtake them. It is, is it, is it, it is in my desire that I should chastise them and the people shall be gathered against them when they shall bind themselves in their two furrows. And Ephraim is as a heifer that is taught and loved to tread out the corn. But I passed over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride. Judah shall plow and Jacob shall break his clouds. Clouds. So to right, your so in righteousness. He's giving us hope again, right? So after all that, all that, all that death and destruction that he's saying, he said, yeah, but yeah, one day I'm going to make Israel to what? It is. He said, I'm going to make Israel to plow and I'm going to make Judah to ride. Right? Watch. Go ahead and read it again. And Ephraim is as a heifer that is taught and loved to tread out the corn. But I passed over her upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride and Judah shall plow and Jacob shall break his clods. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek Yahuwah till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity, ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou did trust in thy way in the multitude of thy mighty men. Therefore shall a tumult, or tumult arise among thy people, and all mm -hmm. thy fortresses, fortresses shall be spoiled, as Shalman spoiled Beth Arbel in the day of battle. The mother was dashed in pieces upon her children. So shall mm -hmm. Bethel do unto you because of your great wickedness. In a morning shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and carried my son out of Egypt. As they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed unto Baalim and burned incense to graven images. Mm -hmm. I taught Ephraim also to go, taking them by their arms, but they knew not that I healed them. Mm -hmm. I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love, and I was to them as, as they that take off the yoke on their jaws, and I laid meat unto them. He shall not return into the land of Egypt, but the Assyrian shall be his king. Because look, he said, look, specifically, he said the Assyrian shall be his king. He's telling us what's about to happen. He's telling us pretty clearly what's about to happen. Right. Keep going. Because they refuse to return and the sword shall abide on his cities and shall consume his branches and devour them because of their own counsels. And my people are bent to backsliding from me. Though they called them to the most high, none at all would exalt him. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma? How shall I set thee as Zeboim? My heart is turned within me. My, re my, my repentings are kindled together. I will not execute the fierceness of my anger, I will not return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not enter into the city. They shall walk after Yahuwah. He shall roar like a lion when he shall roar. Then the children shall tremble from the west. They shall tremble as a bird out of Egypt and as a dove out of the land of Assyria, and I will place them in their houses, says Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Ephraim compassed me about with lies and the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah yet rules with God and is faithful with the saints. What chapter are we on? Well. Huh? Well. Well. And it's 13, right? Yeah, 13 is the end of 
Yeah, so let's, let's try to finish this one out. 14 is in it. You said 14? Yeah. Okay. Ephraim feeds on wind and follows after the east wind. He, mm -hmm. he daily increases lies and desolation, and they do mm -hmm. make a covenant with the Assyrians, and oil is carried up into Egypt. Yahuwah has also a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways. According to his doings, will he recompense him? He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept. He made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. Even Yahuwah, God of hosts, Yahuwah is, is his memorial. Therefore, mm -hmm. Turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on thy God continually. He is a merchant. He is a merchant. The balances of deceit are in his land. He loves to oppress. And Ephraim said, yet am I become rich. I have found me out substance. In all my labors, they shall find none iniquity in me that were sin. And I that am Yahuwah thy God from the land of Egypt will yet will yet make thee to dwell in tabernacles as in the days of the solemn feast. All right. So he said, I'm gonna make you dwell in tents. He said, Y'all got houses now, but he said, Now I'm gonna make you do dwell in the tent. Just like just like in the days when y'all was walking through the wilderness. Watch this, keep going. I have spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the mystery of the prophet, ministry of the prophets. Is so there the book is talking about similitudes. That's that's what that's what um is happening to Hosea. Right? When he says similitude, he's talking about when he says, Yo, Hosea, go get you a wife of whoredom and then have three kids by her. Name the first kid this because it means that, right? Name the first kid Jazriel because um I'm going to put, I'm going to cease to, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to cease Israel and Jezreel. And I'm going to bring all the judgment of uh, of uh, Jehu on all the house of Israel. Then he said, name the, the, the next kid, no mercy. Because most High God ain't going to have no mercy. Right? And name the next kid, uh, not my people. Because y'all not going to be my people. Like when, when he does those types of things, that's called a similitude. When he gives people an image to actually understand what he's doing, most High God is calling that a similitude. So he's saying, I speak to the prophets through similitudes. Watch this. And I multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Is mm -hmm. there iniquity in Gilead? Surely they are vanity. They sacrifice bullocks in Gilgal. Yet yeah, their altars are, are as heaps in the furrows of the fields. And Jacob fled into the country of Syria. And Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. And by a prophet, the Yahuwah brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly. Therefore shall he leave his blood upon him, and his reproach shall his Lord return upon him. When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself. He exalted himself in Israel. But when he, uh, when he offended in Baal, he died. And now they sin more and more and have made them molten images of their silver and idols mm -hmm. according to their own understanding. All of it is the work of the craftsmen. They say to them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Therefore, they shall be as the morning cloud. And as the early dew that passes away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor, and as the smoke out of the chimney, yet I am Yahuwah thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me. For there is no Savior besides me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pastures, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Therefore, I will be unto them as a lion and as a leopard. By the way, will I observe them? I will meet mm -hmm. them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps. And will he said, I'm going to meet them at like a bear that bereaved. Look, I'm going I'm to I'm meet them like a bear who kids got taken away. Like a lady bear, like a like a female bear 
and y'all y'all played around with her babies and took them away, right? He said, oh, that's going to be a furious bear. He said, that's how he's going to meet the, the children of Israel. Keep going. Watch this. And there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear them. O Israel, thou hast devoured thyself, but in mm -hmm. me is thy help. I will be thy king. Where is my other? Where is any other that may serve thee in all thy cities? Mm -hmm. And thy judges of whom thou said, give me a king and princes. I gave thee a king in my anger and took him away in my wrath. You talking about King Saul. Mm -hmm. I remember King Saul. We had Samuel. Samuel was getting old and Samuel had two sons, but his two sons, they weren't righteous men. And we had just dealt with Eli, who was pretty much running the show. Eli was the high pri priest. And Eli had two sons and his two sons wasn't, weren't righteous men. Right. So when we saw it seemed like for us, history was repeating itself with Samuel. So we was like, you know what? Make us like the nations that surround us. Give us a king. So we ain't got to keep dealing with this foolishness. Right. We don't want to wait and have to wait for another judge to come around. We've been dealing with judges for forever. And it just seemed like one comes up and then we doing all right for a little while. And all of a sudden stuff go back to normal. So we got concerned. You know what we said? Give us a king. So the most High God said, man, I gave y'all a king in my anger. He gave us Saul. Then he said, you know what? Then I took him away. Right? Because eventually he took Saul away from us. Watch this. Keep going. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up. His sin is hid. The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, mm -hmm. I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Mm -hmm. Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come. The wind of Yahuwah shall come up from the wilderness and his spring shall become dry and his fountain shall be dried up. He have, he shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate for she, she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces and their women with child shall be ripped up. All right. He's saying, look, the baby's about to get killed. And even the women that got, got children, they going to get killed too. So he said, not only are we going into captivity, he said, there's a lot of y'all that's about to die. Right? Watch this. Keep going. Okay, hold on. Hmm? None. O Israel, return unto Yahuwah thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words and turn to Yahuwah. Say unto him, take away all the iniquity and receive us graciously. Mm -hmm. So will we render the calves of our the calves of our lips. Assure Asher shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. You are our gods. For in thee, the fatherless finds mercy. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For my anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew of Israel. He shall grow He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall review as the corn. They shall mm -hmm. revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as of wine of Lebanon. Ephraim mm -hmm. shall say, what have I to do any more with idols? I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Who is yeah, wise? Me is thy fruit found. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent mm -hmm. and shall know them. For the ways of Yahuwah are right. And the just shall walk in them, but the mm -hmm. transgressors shall fall therein. That's it. All right. So the most high guy, he ended it off with just letting us know that it's his ways that are right. And if you wise, you're going to understand it. You're going to make sense of it. And it's going to line up for you. Right. 
That's why we read it to try to make sure that we have an understanding, we have an opportunity. Right? It don't it don't start it don't start the first time we read this thing unless the most high God put it on us. It don't start with the first time we read this thing that we just understand it right away. No, sometimes this thing takes time. But what the most high God is looking for is perseverance. Right? He's looking for the person that's not gonna give up. Just gonna keep going. Gonna keep pushing forward. Right? Because that's what it takes with the most high God. We gotta endure into the end. Even with all these prophecies that we read and even all, all the stuff that he tell us, we got to have the idea that even though he tell us this, we still going to put our lives in his hand. Right. Just like just like David did. Remember when David was being punished, you know, what I'm saying most of our God gave him three options. He said, man, you know what? Let me, you know, what I'm saying, let me put my hands into your you know what I'm saying, to your put my life into your who hands. Right, because in his mind he looked at me. You know what I'm saying? That's the best place to do. If I'm gonna be punished, let me be punished directly by Yahuwah. Right? That's what we have to do. We have to have that mindset. So we see that's the that's the book of Hosea. The book of Hosea starts to give us a lot of details. You have to imagine the scenery, though. Right? The scenery is we got all of our kings that's running around that we just read about. Right? You got King Jeroboam two, Manea. Uh, you got uh, you got uh, Pika, you know what I'm saying? Pika-Aya. You got Pika Aya, you know what I'm saying? You got all these different kings that that we've been dealing with, and these it, throughout the time you got Amos talking to these kings, you got Hosea talking to these kings, and then we gonna learn about other prophets that also are around at this exact same time, also talking to these very same kings. All this stuff is happening before the big event right king of assyria is about to come and he's about to literally take all the territory move our people out kill a whole bunch of us move the survivors out and push them into other people's land so we're gonna before we read about that specifically we're gonna read more prophecy about all the different things i just want y'all to put it in your heads that before this stuff happened these are all the things that's been said to the people over years and years and years of time. These prophets are standing up like, yo, 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 y'all about to go to Assyria. You got Amos standing like, yo, something bad about to happen. Y'all going to go into captivity, right? And then we're going to read about another prophet that came. His name is Isaiah, right? And he said some things too, okay? Any questions? Questions. with y'all. Any questions online? Hey, what's up, nephew? Hey, Uncle. What's going on? You need a few texts. Hey, hi, Mel. They said no question. No, y'all gotta come out here and see me now. No more texts. Take that drive. You'll be all right. Come here. Come back to. Hi, Unibrow. Hi, Uncle come Baby. Back to... I mean, come to back Vegas. to Vegas. You don't need. Hey, baby girl. Look at that. All right. Let's pray out. That was peace, y'all. We'll, uh, again, uh, we'll get together on at four o'clock. Tomorrow for the Sabbath, four o'clock Pacific time. I'll see y'all. Y'all bless. Sabbath peace. You ain't gonna say nothing to y'all.